Good morning, dear students. Today we'll look into the motor systems related to the pyramidal and extrapyramidal systems with focus on extrapyramidal system. The extrapyramidal system is also called as the subcorticospinal system. It refers to the centers which is related to the forebrain and the brain stem and the fiber tracts which exclude the pyramidal system. So it is away from the pyramidal system, it is extra pyramidal. It has also influence on the lower motor neuron. We can see two centers related to them. One is group A center and group B center. The group A center, as we can see in this diagram, receives direct information from the cerebral cortex, whereas group B receives information from the group A and also information from the cerebral cortex. It consists of the corpus striatum, the subthalamic nuclei, the substantia nigra, the ventrolateral and ventro anterior thalamic nuclei. So this nuclei as well as the subthalamic nuclei related to thalamus, substantia nigra related to the midbrain and corpus striatum related to the basal ganglia. Group B centers receives the data from group A and also from the cerebral cortex directly. It influences also the lower motor neurons. They consist of the red nucleus at the midbrain, that's number one. Number two, the reticular formation. Number three, rectum tectum of the midbrain. Number four, the olivary nucleus of the medulla. The olivary nucleus is situated at the ventral aspect of the medulla. The vestibular nucleus which is situated at the uh, close to the vestibular trigone. Okay, so this is, they both are at the medulla. The olivary nucleus of the medulla and vestibular nucleus also related to the medulla. These two red nucleus and tectum is related to the midbrain and reticular formation also related to the midbrain. The first tract we discuss is the rubrospinal tract that is starting from the red nucleus. So the formation is by the axons of the cells of the red nucleus in the midbrain. It will synapse after crossing and descends in the spinal cord in front of the lateral corticospinal tract which and synapses on the ventral horn cells. It receives, uh, the red nucleus is a neural processing station, receives input from the cerebral cortex and the cerebellum. And its function is primarily to control the muscle tone in the flexa group of muscles and it may be correlated with the most skilled voluntary movements. The reticulospinal tract formation is by the axons in the reticular formation of the brain stem which synapse on the ventral horn cells. It receives the cells in the reticular formation receives input from the contralateral pericentral cortex. It function to influence the motor activity related to posture and tone. As we can see here, the lateral corticospinal tract, which was discussed in the previous uh, video, and the anterior corticospinal tract is related to the pyramidal system. This is the location for the rubrospinal tract which is also a lateral tract, close to the lateral corticospinal tract. Then we have reticulospinal tract, the tectospinal tract, the olivospinal tract, and the 
vestibulospinal tract which are all anterior tracts. The tectospinal tract is the is related to the formation axons of the cells of the superior colliculus which synapse in the ventral horn cells. So superior colliculus is at the midbrain. It receives input from the eye and the cerebral cortex. Its function is also related to the eye movements, correlation of the eye movements along with the appropriate head and neck movements. It's brought in respect to the various stimuli. The olivospinal tract, the formation is by the main and the accessory olivary nuclei and it synapse on the ventral horn cells. Its function of the main nucleus is related to the skilled neocerebellar activity, which is related to the new cerebellum, uh, the main one related to the uh, input from the cerebrum. An accessory nuclei concerned in symmetrical routine paleocerebellar activity. The vestibulospinal tract, the formation is by the cells of the medial and lateral vestibular nuclei in the medulla and also synapse on the ventral horn cells. It receives, the vestibular nuclei receives input from the static receptor cells in the utricle, which is in the inner ear, as well as in the cerebellum. The lateral vestibulospinal tract facilitates the muscle tone, whereas the medial vestibulospinal tract inhibits the muscle tone. It is the only descending tract which has ex which exerts inhibitory effects on the lower motor neuron. We can see differences between the pyramidal tract and the extrapyramidal tract. The names of the tracts: lateral corticospinal tract ventral corticospinal tract and the corticobulbar or the corticonuclear. The extra pyramidal tract are namely the rubrospinal, reticulospinal, tectospinal, olivospinal and vestibulospinal. The location it begins from the precentral gyrus mainly and here it begins from the brainstem nuclei. The control is directly from the cerebral cortex whereas here there is no direct control from the cerebral cortex as you can see the names rubrospinal starts from the red nucleus and to the spinal cord whereas in uh, pyramidal tract it's also called as corticospinal tract it starts from the cortex coming to the cor uh, crossing of the fibers 80 percent of them cross at the medulla and 20 percent at the spinal cord the extra pyramidal tract all of them cross except the vestibulospinal coming to the function the lateral corticospinal tract is mainly involved with fine movement. It is writing and maybe needle-like move, needle work. The ventral corticospinal tract related to postural movement. The extrapyramidal tract helps in control of the entire body posture and involuntary movements of the muscles. The upper motor neuron lesion is related to pyramidal and extrapyramidal. In pyramidal, the Babinski sign that is extensor plantar will be positive, and in extrapyramidal, it is spastic paralysis in which you can see increased muscle tone and there is hyperactive reflexes. We can notice absent superficial abdominal reflexes. Here, there is little or no muscular atrophy. There is absent cremastric reflex. Here there is exaggerated deep muscle reflexes. Loss of performance of the fine skilled voluntary movements. And here there may be a flapping clonus. There is hypertonia and there is clasp knife response. These are all seen in the extra pyramidal upper motor neuron lesion. And these are seen in the pyramidal upper motor neuron lesion. Now let us focus on the extrapyramidal lesion. There are unwanted movements such as chore choreoform movements which is brisk jerky movements seen in the axial and the proximal limb musculature. 
and there is adetoid movements which is slow sinuous aimless movements seen in the distal limb musculature this is how the choreoform movements look like brisk jerky movements seen in the axial and proximal limb musculature and this is the athetoid movements slow sinuous aimless movements seen in the distal limb musculature Further, we can see dystonia muscularum deformance, sustained slow involuntary movements leading to contraction of muscles and hemibelismus which is sudden movement at the proximal joints of the limbs. This is how the movements of hemibelismus looks like, sudden movements at the proximal joints of the limbs. Parkinson's disease which is the most common type of extra pyramidal type of disease so we have unintentional tremor now let us look into his posture so we have a stooped posture okay this is called a stooped posture then there is rigidity of the muscles here there is masked facial expression you will not find any expression on his face there is masked facial expression there is forward tilt of the trunk there is flexed elbows and wrist and there is reduced arm swinging you can also see that there is slight flexed hips and knees and there is also trembling of the extremities there is short shuffling stepped gait it's also called as the fascinating gait the tremor is usually called as unintentional type of tremor. It is shaking and it starts usually from one side. There is rigidity, stiffness of the limbs, the neck or the trunk. There is akinesia or bradykinesia, loss or impairment in the power of voluntary movement. And there is also difficulty with the posture and balance. As you can notice that there is a stoop posture and his balance also like when he is walking he has a fascinating gait this is how his gait will be this is called as a fascinating gait short shuffling and stepped gait okay short stepped gait there is a stooped posture there is no swinging of the arm and you can see flexion of the elbows and flexion of the hip also hip and knees also so Parkinsonism is a clinically syndrome characterized by diminished facial expression that is a masked face faces. There is a souped posture. There is slowness, slowness of, of voluntary movement. There is a fascinating gait which is progressively shortened accelerated steps that is short shuffling steps. There is rigidity and there is a pill rolling tremor which can be noticed here. This tremor is known as pill rolling tremor. Okay, again we can see the same features here. The, the head is held forward and there is a stooped posture over here. The, there is rigidity, there is drooping of eyelids, open mouth, salivary uh, drooling, okay, masked facies. Then there is tremor of hands, there is short shuffling gait. Okay, this type of motor disturbance is seen in a number of conditions that share a damage to the dopaminergic neurons of the substantia nigra substantia nigra situated in the midbrain right and or to their projection to the striatum parkinsonism can be induced by drugs that affect these neurons particularly the dopamine antagonist the toxins uh, mptp okay so the mptp is 1 methyl 4 phenyl 1 2 3 6 tetrahydropyridin which is a neurotoxin then maybe the influenza virus 
or the alpha uh, all these will cause uh, all these can uh, cause parkinsonism and we can see alpha psi nuclei mutations which produce Lewy body inclusions in the neurons So in figure A, uh, we can see that there is a normal substantia nigra of the midbrain. This is the uh, mid section of the midbrain. This is actually the cerebral aqueduct which you are noticing. And this is substantia nigra. This is a normal uh, figure A, shows normal uh, substantia nigra in the midbrain. Whereas in figure B, there is absence of substantia nigra pigmentation in the midbrain, which is noticed in Parkinsonism. And this is the presence of Lewy body's inclusion. It is typically situated or seen in uh, Parkinson's disease. Coming to Huntington's disease, it is an inherited autosomal dominant disease characterized, characterized clinically by progressive movement disorders and dementia with degeneration of the striatum that is the caudate and the cutamen. The movement disorder consists of jerky, hyperkinetic and sometimes dystonic movements that is called chorea which we saw in the first video affecting all parts of the body. The patient can also develop Parkinsonism with bradykinesia and rigidity. The disease is relentlessly progressive and it can cause death after an average course of about 15 years. The HD has the same type of mutation as a trinucleotide repeat expansion in the gene located in 4P16.3 that encodes a large protein called Huntington's. So that's about the Huntington's disease which is inherited autosomal dominant disease. This is the normal hemisphere. This is a coronal section in which we can see that this is the frontal lobe here. This is caudate lobe, caudate uh, nucleus. This is the uh, lentiform nucleus. So together this is called as the striatum. And, uh, and this is the um, anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. Now uh, the figure A shows a normal hemisphere whereas figure B shows Huntington's disease in which there is atrophy of the striatum. <coughs> 